And welcome back to Sanford Flip Math. This is Precalculus. We are in uh, Chapter 2 from the Precalculus book we're using, which is by Demana Waits Foley Kennedy. And the images you see here on the screen are from, uh, from that book. Uh, the one on the left is from uh, uh, 2.1 and the one on the right from 2.2. And I uh, just want to, I have this one for a polynomial function up here just to remind you really specifically about a monomial. Uh, remember a monomial. Uh, Sanford's definition is uh, it's either a number, uh, a variable, or a product of those uh, of uh, numbers and or variables. Okay, so basically it comes out to be anything that you can write in this form where uh, we're talking about a x to the n, and n has to be an integer, a whole number, greater than or equal to 0. Um, uh, so we're talking about things like 3x uh, to the third, negative uh, 5x7 uh, is considered a monomial. Uh, pi is a monomial. Uh, so anything like that. The only catch, again, is that this needs to be an integer greater than or equal to zero. So no negatives, no fractions, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so I need to do a little contrast of that with, uh, with this. Uh, so this is a power function. And again, uh, so now a power function is anything, now you could even use the same letters. Uh, they use K, and the basic reason they use K is because this gets used a lot in talking about variation. And in, if we're talking about variation, we will be in just a second. Uh, that coefficient up front is often referred to a const, uh, referred to as the constant. Uh, it and uh, it's the constant of variation. So, uh, and I'm not sure really why they pick k for constant instead of c for constant, but uh, nevertheless, that is what gets. Uh, picked. Now, the other thing that uh, is a little different here is the exponents for this basically needs to be not zero. Okay. So over here, uh, when we're talk when we were talking about monomials, the seven is like seven x to the zero. So that's an instance where n is zero. Well, seven x to the zero is not a power function. Okay. So 7x is a power function. 7x uh, to the third is a power function. 7x uh, to the three halves is also a power function, whereas that would not be a monomial. Um, 7x to the negative 2 is also considered a power function, but not a monomial. Okay, so it's kind of a, a slightly different thing, and unfortunately, it, it they're similar, so they can be confused. Okay, so uh, also, that number up front, that k, could be 1. So you could be looking at something like uh, x to the fourth as a power function. Um, the square root of x technically is a power function because it can be written as x to the 1 half. Okay? So power functions uh, are a little bit different. Uh, any variable raised to any uh, exponent, not 0. And uh, similarly, the number up front needs to not be 0 also. Okay, so that number needs to not be zero. Otherwise, all we're doing, looking at is y equals zero, which is technically a monomial, but not a power function because you don't have any meaning for using the power. Okay? All right, so we're going to branch this off a little bit, a little more specifically into variation. Okay, so variation uh, is typically either direct variation or inverse variation. And the wording here uh, gives the impression that we ought to use a proportion. And I will tell you that there are ways to make proportions work. I think making the proportions with the, uh, using proportions with this makes it more confusing. And so I don't do it. So every example you see me do is going to follow a power function model. So I'm, I'm using a, a power functions for variation, for direct and inverse variation. And uh, even though the word proportional might appear in there, I'm, I'm not going to use a proportion to do it. 
when things start getting crazy, like inverse uh, proportions, you know, uh, inversely proportional varies inversely, the proportions get a little goofy when we start adding in, uh, when we start putting in exponents, like squaring, like uh, inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light and things like that. Uh, things get a little confusing, so I don't use them, okay? All right, so I'm going to give you some basic format, power function formats, and, you, well, let me just do it. Okay, so this is the wording. Typically, it's going to be something like some variable about y, could be uh, something else, uh, varies directly, or is directly proportional to, varies directly as the some kind of power of x. So the wording usually follows this kind of pattern. And when that happens, then the equation for that is y equals k x to the n. Okay, and uh, and again, the book might use a for this or or some other variable, you know, in certain situations. But I'm going to use n. Okay. Um, so, for instance, uh, the area of a circle varies directly with the square of its radius. Well, so the term, the wording here is area of a circle, that's my y variable, varies directly as or with, well, varies directly. As soon as I see that, I know it's going to be equal k times, because that's what this relationship is, okay, and then it says the square of its radius, so the radius squared, okay, and that's it. That's taking the wording to symbols, okay. Now, worth noting that the, the equals k is, is just part of uh, equals k times is part of varies directly. Okay. Now you should recognize this formula. This is the same thing as a equals pi r squared. It's just that constant of variation, that number that makes this variation work, happens to be pi. That's all. Okay. Now, similarly, uh, the only difference between Ah, that was magic, wasn't it? Uh, between varies directly and varies inversely, well, in the wording is that word. And where the direct variation was connected by multiplication, well, inverse variation is connected by the inverse of multiplication, division. So this is going to be y equals k over x to the n. Okay, uh, let me throw a little nth in that box. Okay, all right, so uh, a quick example of this might be so the example is uh, the intensity of light varies inversely with the square of the distance from the bulb. Okay, so I'm going to use variables that kind of go along with uh, what's being talked about. So intensity of light, so the intensity of light varies inversely as, so equals k divided by the square of the distance from the bulb. So the square of the distance from the bulb. Okay, so it follows the same exact pattern, only if the word inversely is in there, we do division instead of multiplication. Okay? All right, so that's the basic format. Now, let, let's do some with numbers. Okay? Okay, so the next example, the weight a board can, can support varies directly with the square of the thickness. The weight a board can support... I'm actually going to use P for weight, uh, and because I'm thinking in pounds... Okay, uh, and I know that uh, later, if I use W I, uh, in another example, in the next example, it's going to be about width, and I want to use be consistent. Okay, so the weight a board can support, P, 
pounds, varies directly equals k times. Okay, so automatically, I'm thinking as soon as I see directly, I'm thinking equal k equals k times. Okay, the square of its thickness. Now, not everything's about something squared, but I just want you to see, you know, an exponent in there. And the next, the next version of this won't have that. Okay, it says a board four feet long. Okay, now there was nothing in here about length, so we don't care. I'm sorry, a board eight feet long, eight feet long, four inches wide. There's nothing in here about width. I don't need that. Two inches thick, that I need. Can support 200 pounds, okay? So what we're going to do, now, so that's two inches thick and 200 pounds. Well, the only thing I don't know is K, and so what happens here is, okay, we're going to write the equation in, with just variables. We're going to substitute what we know and solve for K. Then we're going to use the K to answer the next question. Okay, so th this is kind of like the overall plan, because what just happened was I gave you enough information to find K. So 200 equals 4K. Again, 2 squared is 4. So K must be 50. Now, if this was a science class, I would be a like, stickler about units in this. This was inches squared. This was pounds and my k value here then when I divide by inches squared would be pounds per cubic inch. Now, I just want you to see that I'm not going to worry about units right now. At the very end, I will. Okay. So the question says, if I have a board that's 2 inches thick and it supports 200 pounds, well, what happens if I have a board that's 4 inches thick? So I'm changing the thickness. I want to know how much weight can it support. How much weight? Could a board eight feet long, four, again, eight feet long, four inches wide, I don't, I'm not using that right now, equals, so P equals K, well now I know a number for that, times thickness squared, well this is four squared. So worth noting that I'm still following the same exact relationship here. This is still K times T squared. Okay, so this is 500 times 16. Well, 500 times 16, I'm sorry, yes, 500 times 16, what is that, 500? Yep, thank you for catching that, everybody, all of you following along at home. 500, that's 50 times 16. All right, let's try 50 times 16 is 800. I should have been able to do that in my head. 800 what? Well, this is weight in pounds, okay? So 800 pounds. All right. So again, write the equation, substitute what you know to solve for K, use K to answer the question. Let's do it again. The weight of a board that a board can support varies directly with its width. The weight of a board, I'm sorry, not the weight of a board, but the weight that the board can support, okay, varies directly with equals K times its width. That's why I didn't want to use W earlier. Okay. So again, we're, we wrote the equation. Now we're going to substitute what we know. A board eight feet long. Got nothing about length in here. Four inches wide. Ha, ah, that I got. Can support 200 pounds. Oh, sorry. That's 200. Okay. Um, I can solve for K. Scared myself, I saw the K equaling the same thing. Don't think it always will. Okay, so P equals 50 times W. Last time it was 2 squared that got me that. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the same information. Okay, and it says how much weight could a board 8 feet long? Don't need that. 8 inches wide. Oh, ooh, I do need that. Don't, don't, don't cross out the thing I need. 8 inches wide and two inches thick. So notice what we're doing is we're keeping everything the same, the eight feet long and two inches thick, that stayed the same. The only thing that changed now is the width, okay? All right, so the weight it can support equals 50 times, and we decided that, or I'm sorry, now we're doing eight times eight. Okay, so that's 400 
pounds. Okay. Okay, quick little side note here. I doubled the width and it doubled the amount that it could support. Let me pop back here. Thickness varied as the square, right, or the, the weight varied as the square of the thickness. When I doubled the, the thickness, it didn't just double the weight, it multiplied it times 4, 2 squared. This was just doubling, and it just doubled, okay? Let's do one more example of this, and then we'll be done, okay? The weight a board can support varies inversely with its length, okay? So I'm going to substitute in 200 equals K over its length, and that length was 8 feet, so K equals 8, so that's 1,600. Okay, so now I can build an equation over length. So P equals 1,600 over length, and the length now is 4 feet long. So now it's 400 pounds. Okay, so you can think about what just happened when you divided in half. It actually doubled the weight. That's it for now. That was not too bad time-wise. Talk to you later.